So this year, we are not going to be seeing a massive charter school rally complete with a performance from a pop star. However, the annual advocacy day did include an appearance from the state education commissioner, who in some circles is sort of like a pop star. With me to talk more about that are Kyle Rosenkranz. He is from the Northeast Charter Schools Network, and James Merriman from the New York City Charter Center, and Deborah Stern. She's the founder of Amani Charter School in Mount Vernon. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to Capital tonight. Thank you. So Kyle, we'll, st we'll start with you. Um, there is a perception, uh, forgive me for being, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, but that, that charters are sort of off the front burner. The governor was this huge proponent. It were like thousands of screaming people. It was driven by success academies and really the uncomfortable relationship between Eva Moskowitz and Mayor de Blasio. But now success academies has its own set of problems and charters seem to be sort of not as much as a priority. Do you agree or disagree with that in Albany? I know that they're a big priority for you. That's right, but I, I think charters remain a priority. What I see less of is actually the controversy and I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think people this year are more focused on fixing policy problems for charter schools. And anytime we're there, instead of the noise and the politics, I think that's a good thing. So, you know, that's why you saw the governor put forward some policy proposals that would help charter schools. Um, and we're asking to complete that package in a number of different ways. But the, the idea is we're, we are in a position to pass some pro-charter policy this year without all the controversy, just help children. And I think Finally, we might have a chance to do that this year. Well, but but you also have the union putting forth legislation that it says would force charters to accept kids that the union says you're not interested in educating, more or less. I'm, I'm yeah. really sort of dumbing that down. But And the governor, <coughs> in s some people's eyes, siding with the unions on things like tests and teacher evaluations, and so perhaps setting the stage in an election year for the legislature for the union to get something that it wants, which isn't necessarily good for you guys. Well, I mean, teacher eval, testing, those are other issues than charters, and uh, I'll leave them on the table for the moment. Probably wise. Uh, yeah, look, the UFT is inveterately against charters, having one on teacher eval, they at least say they've turned their sights back to us, and, and so be it. I, I think it, you know, adding to what Kyle said, what I would say is this, that we solved some major problems, not statewide, but certainly in the city in terms of getting facilities assistance. And it's not like there's this infinite list of problems to solve. We solved them. We now have some issues around operating funding. Well, not I now have some issues. You have had some issues with operating funding. You want, you, I mean, you want equity effectively. We do want equity. And you've wanted it for a couple of years, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. It, it's true. And, and in New York City, by repegging how we get funded to what the district expends, it moves us closer to equity. It doesn't get us there, though. Mm. What does it look like, Deborah, from the ground, mm -hmm. or from the charter school world, where you're actually focused on teaching kids day in and day out, and sort of Albany's like a little bit of a background noise right. kind of a thing? Well, I think when you say that, um, you know, setting rules that will have us educate children that we supposedly don't want to educate, I find that to be kind of interesting because there already is a little rule that says that I have to have a same percentage of kids in my school who are special ed or uh, students with disability or, you know, um, economically disadvantaged as a district. That's been the way it's been from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And if I don't hit those metrics, I'm in trouble. So I always find that kind of interesting because I was like, there's a higher accountability measure that I have to be accountable for, and I do that every day. So are you saying then that the accusations of creaming are, un are unfounded? They're unfounded as far as it, yes. And there are definitely, I think that we get a bad rap, and so, um, it, and it hurts us because we definitely in Mount Vernon and we take every kid that comes to our door. Mm. I don't know how to keep them out. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no screening. Um, and as I say to my parents, it's a choice to if you want to come here. And there's a lot of parents that we say to them because of our model, and this is changing because as you grow, you, you can do more stuff. But um, our original model was ICT. It's too boring to get into what that means. But a lot of students would come and not have that on their IEP. And we say to parents, this is not what we have here you know, what do you want to do? And they're like, we want to stay here because you're doing something right that they mm. weren't doing at the other school. And as we've grown, we've grown our program so that now we can branch out into resource room. We'll do other things to be able to meet greater and greater and greater needs as we have more resources and more legs under us. But um, they want, people want to stay because something's not happening on the outside. 
What does it mean uh, uh, that the State Education Commissioner showed up? Now, she didn't show up and sort of profess, you know, 100% undying support for charter schools, but she showed up. And she actually took some heat for showing up. She, prior to her showing up, she, there was heat that was given to her, and she, had, she felt the need to explain that she wanted to have a conversation, that she was all inclusive, et cetera. I mean, did you think that it was, how significant was it that she actually was there? I think it was very significant. And it, the message was charters are a part of the permanent public education landscape in the state. So it, it should not be a controversy if the commissioner of education comes and talks to over a thousand charter school parents, teachers, and staff members. She should be talking to them. And so the fact that others want to squelch her ability to have that kind of communication to address a large gathering of people from across the state is just ridiculous. Well, but she is offensive. Okay, I mean, frankly, I mean to have to have a room full of parents come up from the city and to have nice it, and and Karen McGee suggest that somehow the commissioner of education should snub them. How dare they? Do you think that? What's the perception sort of generally in the charter community about her? I mean, her predecessor was viewed as pro-charter. He came from the charter world, if, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I mean, obviously now he's in D.C. But right. what is her, she's a public school person. I mean, that's, that's her background. She, she's, she was a superintendent, obviously, in Florida for a long time. She is a public school person. But she worked well with charters down in Florida. And I think she looks for a good working relationship with charters. She, she said very clearly, she's for school choice. And that's, that's, in essence, what charters are, right? They give choice to a group of parents that heretofore had no choice because they didn't have the means to move to other districts or other parts of the city in New York. So, Deborah, we're going to run out of time, but you, you sort of touched on this. I'd like to end with you. I mean, what you would be able to do with more resources is offer more services and be more inclusive, mm -hmm. which would sort of close the circle, in your words, is the way I understood mm -hmm. it. To, to address some of the criticism that comes charters way, if you were actually better funded, you would be able to do more for a wider variety of kids. Yeah, and I think that um, one of the things, I have a unique situation because our charter school is outside of New York City, even though some New York City schools have this situation. So in the beginning, I had to spend a lot of my time finding a place and paying rent right. on a place that a public school doesn't have that same consideration. So a lot of our monies go to that. A lot of the efforts that I put in the beginning went to it, you know, um, to having a building, <laughs> which is helpful because you need that. Uh, so uh, kind of square one. It, yeah, it is square one. But nobody thought about the fact that square one because the money in the budget doesn't have facilities money. Right. I'm not sure where they expected us to do this educating that we're doing, but you had to figure it out. So. Okay, so we will be checking back with you guys sort of periodically as we move through the session. As I keep saying, we're kind of early, but I, maybe soon I'm going to be able to stop saying that because we are moving through this rather rapidly. <laughs> I thank you all for being here, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Pleasure.